Welcome to week 12 of Papa's Picks, brought to you by FantasyDonks.com, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know to start playing daily fantasy football. I'm Sean Big Papa Williams, and like usual, I'll be giving you my picks for week 12 of the NFL football season for daily football fantasy. We're going to be using DraftKings site as they're running the Millionaire Maker yet again this week, and it's a tournament that's a lot of fun, $27 to enter. I will be entering it, and hopefully you will too, and hopefully Hopefully one of us will take down that million dollar uh, for prize come Monday morning or Tuesday if that Bills game gets rescheduled. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Without further ado, let's get to the Papa's picks as usual. We'll start off with quarterbacks, and the number one quarterback I have for you on the board this week is Andrew Luck versus Jacksonville. He carries with him a $9,700 price tag. Look, uh, Luck is expensive, but he gets the Jags at home. And the Colts have lost Ahmad Bradshaw. That means Luck should have to throw the ball a lot. I, luck, I like Luck a lot to have a great performance this week at home versus the Jags. The number two quarterback I have for you this week is Jay Cutler versus the Tampa Bay Bucks. At $7,700, I think Cutler is a really good priced quarterback. He looked good last week, and that should continue hopefully this week with a matchup against the putrid Bucks defense um, that are allowing points at will to opposing fantasy quarterbacks. The number three quarterback I have for you this week is Josh McCown at Chicago. He is $6,600 this week, and um, it's it's widely accepted in the NFL that you can throw against the Bears as the Bears surrender the second most points to opposing fantasy quarterbacks and McCown has been throwing the ball well. I would look for another strong outing from McCown throwing to the likes of Mike Evans and Vincent Jackson. I think those they're both in play this week and so is McCown. The number four quarterback I have for you this week is that of Brian Hoyer at Atlanta. He is $5,900. Hoyer gets Josh Gordon back and draws the Falcons in the same week. That's great news for the Browns. Hoyer may just be poised to catch fire, getting his favorite weapon back from last year that, that torched the NFL and was the top wide receiver. I like Hoyer this week to put up a nice stat line and pay off his $5,900 price tag. For the risk-reward pick of the number five, I'm going to give you a two for here. And the first is that of Zach Mettenberger at $5,300 at the Philadelphia Eagles. The second is Kyle Orton versus the Jets at $5,600. Let's first start with Mettenberger. Mettenberger's been okay thus far. Nothing great, nothing terrible, but he gets the Eagles, who are the worst team in the NFL, uh, uh, surrendering points to opposing quarterbacks. I think he should have a good game, and this may be the Zach Mettenberger coming out party. Kyle Orton, on the other hand, gets the Jets, who are a bottom three defense against, against opposing quarterbacks, but the snow in Buffalo is making this game... Uh, in the air currently as I film this. Uh, the NFL may reschedule this game for a different venue or it could possibly be rescheduled for Monday night or Tuesday night football even. Um, if you're going to play Orton or any of the Bills, just keep a heads up and watch the NFL as they have to announce by their own rules by tomorrow, Friday. Um, and you should get an update on that. With that said, let's move right along to the running backs as usual. The number one running back I have for you on the board this week is that of DeMarco Murray at the New York Jet Giants. Excuse me. He's $8,500. Look, the matchup is too sexy for me not to mention as the Giants are awful against the run, ranking second to last in the NFL. Um... He is also a grand cheaper than Matt Forte. That's why I have him as my number one play this week. Uh, I, I love DeMarco Murray to actually put up a monster. Uh, he might even hit the 30-plus mark. The number two running back I have for you this week is Matt Forte versus Tampa Bay. Keep in mind, I downgraded him just because of his price tag. He's $9,500, and the Bucks are still bad defensively, and now their offense can score points, which means Forte should be in line for a great game, which is where he, at, where he catches all his balls and gets all the points for you. Um, I think that the game that he's capable of having against the Bucks is capable of paying off his price tag. Um, it's just once again at ninety five hundred dollars, it really handcuffs you with what your ability, with what you're able to do building the rest of your team. The number three running back I have for you this week is that of LaShawn McCoy. He's $6,200. He's versus the Tennessee Titans. LaShawn is proclaiming this week that he is still the same player that he was last year when he was a beast. It, 
if he can return to that form this week, he is every bit worth the $6,200 price tag. Keep in mind, the Steelers just thrashed this Titans team for uh, for a huge game on the ground. Uh, Le'Veon Bell had a monster against this Titans uh, defense. I think this could be McCoy's week. Um, make sure you get him into a lineup or two if you're, uh, if you're throwing a dart at the millions. The fourth uh, running back I have for you this week is that of Isaiah Kroll. He's $3,800, and they're at the Falcons this week. Look, Ben Tate was cut this week, leaving Kroll and West, who's $3,400, to carry the load. Both of these running backs are in play this week, according to me, but Kroll has been named the starter, and the Falcons are ranked dead last against the run, which is why I'm leaning the way of Kroll. A great contrarian play would be West. When they're both playing, they usually put up about 15 apiece. I think uh, a, an extra touchdown there makes them have a monster, a great day. A couple touchdowns make them have monster days. Look for uh, Kroll and or West to have great games this week. I'm leaning on Kroll. The number five pick I have for you running back this week is Papa's Risk Reward Play of the Week, and that is Theoretic at $3,200 at the Patriots. Bush at Reggie Bush at $4,400 may be back, but he's still listed as questionable on the injury report. I would uh, keep a watch on that. But Joyke Bell is listed as questionable, and the feelings are that he's probably out for the week. With that said, Riddick and the entire Lions team let all fantasy players down last week with their putrid performance against the Arizona Cardinals. So I would guess their ownership percentage will be low in the tournaments. But keep in mind, the Patriots are still bad against the run, and I like Theoretic, and if Reggie Bush plays, Reggie Bush, uh, either one of them, to have great days, uh, actually both of them, to have great days against the Patriots' run defense. With that, with the running backs all wrapped up, let's move right along to wide receivers. The number one wide receiver I have for you this week is that of Brandon Marshall versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucks' defense is bottom three in the league against opposing wide receivers, and B. Marsh and Cutler look to have found their groove again. I like I like B. Marsh because when he gets when he gets in this mode, he tends to put up huge games back to back to back to back, and and. And as long as they're continuing to face cupcake matchups, I think B. Marsh is going to tear uh, to tear them up and put up great fantasy points for you. The number two wide receiver that I have for you this week is that of A.J. Green at Houston. Uh, he's 7,300. A.J. Green is finally healthy and returning to elite form. The Texans are the worst team in the NFL against opposing wide receivers. I like A.J. Green to have monster day uh, thrashing that Texan secondary. The number three wide receiver I have for you this week is that of Mike Evans at Chicago. Um, he's $7,800. And all I can say about Mike Evans is, wow. Like, Evans appears to be the real deal and has caught six and has caught touchdowns in his last six games. You can throw all day on this Bears secondary, and I like Evans to continue to lock down Rookie of the Year this year and with a monster performance against the Bears. The number four wide receiver I have for you this week is that of Steve Smith Sr. He's 4,800 at New Orleans. He said this week, quote, when he performs on Monday Night Football, it makes old girlfriends mad they aren't still with him. While Steve Smith has been a tad disappointing in the last few weeks, I look for him to bounce back on primetime against the Saints D that repeatedly gets torched by the past. Um, Steve Smith Sr. is also one of those guys that loves to perform on Monday Night Football and has a track record of putting up beast games on Monday Night Football. At $4,800, he could be a steal and uh, plug and play him in your lineups this week. The number five risk reward ride receiver I have for you this week is that of Josh Gordon at $6,300. He is at Atlanta playing the Falcons. Gordon is a bit overpriced for his debut at the $6,300 price tag, but last year, if you remember correctly, his debut was an epic performance and he came out and went gangbusters. I will take Gordon because of that at least a couple of times on a couple of lineups that I'm uh, that I have him play this week. I think you should too. Um, I think the consensus for most of the community playing in fantasy sports will be a wait and see approach, um, meaning people won't be on Josh Gordon this week. They'll wait to for him to have a performance before they jump on the Josh Gordon bandwagon. I think even though he's a little bit overpriced. If he beasts up, you're going to be uh, you're, it's, he's going to be a separator for you in various tournaments. I wouldn't play him in uh, in heads up or uh, or fifty fifties though. 
Now that we've wrapped up wide receivers, let's move right along to the tight end position. And the first tight end I have for you on the board this week is that of Rob Gronkowski at 7,900 versus the Detroit Lions. Gronk is a beast and can put up a monster at any time. We all know that. He is pricey this week again, but... He's the best option at tight end, and uh, and if you look at the matchups, has the best matchup of all the elite tight ends. The other elite tight ends are in, are in uh, bad statistical matchups, and their prices are just too high for the matchups that they're in. The number two tight end I have for you this week is that of Colby Fleener versus Jacksonville at 5,200. With Bradshaw out, the Colts will be more pass happy, as I've said earlier. And with Allen, the other tight end out with an injury, Fleener should see a big day, just like he saw last week. The only question you have with Colby Fleener is whether or not he will catch the balls that Luck throws his way. Luck will target him early and often in this game. It's just a question of whether or not Fleener can come down with those grabs. If he does, he'll be a monster and pay off his $5,200 price tag. The third tight end I have for you this week is Martellus Bennett versus the Bucks at 4K. The black unicorn draws the Bucks this week, and he's coming off two bad performances back-to-back. If he can bounce back to that 20 point per week performance that he was doing earlier in the season, he will pay off leaps and bounds that four grand uh, price tag. And, and, and I love this play this week if Martellus Bennett can get back to form. The number four tight end I have for you this week is Larry Donald versus the Cowboys at 3,900. The Cowboys are the second worst defense against tight ends in the league, and Larry Donald has, put, has been okay. Um, recently but could put up a huge game against the Cowboys. I I think that when division when these divisional matchups come to play, uh, tight ends often tend to be up as the games are uh, tend to be slower and more in the trenches, which means the tight ends usually catch the most balls for the receiving core. Um, that also carries over into the risk reward pick that I have for you at tight end this week, which is that of Jason Witten in the same game. He has 4400 um, age is starting to show with Witten, and he hasn't had a game of elite caliber status yet. Um, but the truth is he gets a really juicy matchup on Sunday Night Football. I think he still has a little bit left in the tank, and I realize he's overpriced for what he is now. But if there's that big game left in the tank, and he's tore up the Giants before on primetime football, I think it'll be this week in prime time on Sunday night against that Giants defense, Witten may be able to put down an elite caliber performance. Well, that wraps up Papa's picks for week 12 of the NFL football season. Hopefully that those recommendations will make me and all of us some money. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave, leave them at fantasydonks.com or hit us up on Twitter at Big Papa Debate. That's B-I-G-P-O-P-P-A-D-B and the number eight on Twitter. And I'll answer any and all questions you have about fantasy football, whether that's daily fantasy football or your season long leagues. Um, Let's cross our fingers, say a little extra prayer to the fantasy football gods this week, and let's take down that millionaire, that millionaire maker and crown one of us a millionaire for playing fantasy football. Good luck, everybody, and have a great week.